Hello everyone, my name is Khalid El Jali. I am an assistant professor and infectious disease pharmacist at King Abdulaziz University and Hospital in Saudi Arabia. Also currently, I am an honorary research fellow at University of Arizona. In this presentation, I will be reviewing pertinent drug information on corticosteroids for SARS-CoV-2 which cause COVID-19. This review is part of COVID-19 resources from the Society of Infectious Disease Pharmacists. The objectives of this presentation are to discuss the mechanism of action and safety of corticosteroids, explain the potential benefit and harm of using these agents for COVID-19, and evaluate relevant literature for their role in COVID-19. Mechanistically, as you know, corticosteroids have significant anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory effects. They have inhibitory effects on a broad range of innate and adaptive immune responses. Therefore, they are effective in managing several inflammatory and autoimmune disorders. They have direct effects on gene expression through binding of glucocorticoid receptors to glucocorticoid responsive elements. Also, they have indirect effects on gene expression through interaction of glucocorticoid receptors with transcription factors. In addition, they have uh, glucocorticoid receptor mediated effects on uh, second messenger cascades. The role of corticosteroids in several infectious diseases has been debatable. Specifically in COVID-19, it's very debatable. This is one of the proposed classification system, and it seems there are two distinct but overlapping pathological phases. The first is triggered by the virus itself, and the second by the host response resulting in severe inflammation. It is less likely that corticosteroid is helpful in the early infection period, and the infection could even get worse due to immunosuppression and potentially provoking viral replication. When patients start experiencing hypoxia, then it is more likely that they might progress to mechanical ventilation, and in that situation, anti-inflammatory effect of corticosteroids might be beneficial. And the greatest benefit of corticosteroid might be seen in the later period in which there is severe inflammation, and reducing that inflammation by corticosteroids might reduce the risk of multi-organ dysfunction and mortality. However, again, the role of corticosteroids in COVID-19 is still very debatable and we don't have a clear answer. With regard to dosing, the SCCM guideline recommended 1 mg per kilogram per day of methylprednisolone or equivalent doses in case of early acute respiratory distress syndrome and 2 mg per kilogram per day for late ARDS followed with slow taper over 6 to 14 days. And for refractory septic shock, they recommended low dose, hydrocortisone IV 200 mg per day. And in the randomized clinical trial, recovery trial, they used dexamethasone 6 mg per day for 10 days without taper. Corticosteroids have several side effects. Because they lower immunity, they can increase the risk of infection. Also, they increase the serum blood glucose, so we need to monitor that. Due to its sodium and water retention and potassium excretion, they can cause hypernatremia, hypokalemia, and fluid retention. They have other side effects, such as leukocytosis, neuropsychiatric, muscular, and gastrointestinal adverse reaction. Although corticosteroids don't have a lot of clinically relevant drug-drug interactions, we need to be careful because of its potential additive and metabolic drug-drug interactions. An example of the additive interaction is when you give a corticosteroid with another agent that can cause hypokalemia and hyperglycemia. So we need to be more careful and monitor the serum level of glucose and potassium. An example of metabolic drug-drug interaction is when you give corticosteroids with any agent that inhibit or induce 
the cytochrome B453E4. And by the way, one of the COVID-19 investigational agent, Portier's inhibitor, such as lopinavir, ritonavir, uh, this one is uh, an enzyme inhibitor and might increase the serum level of corticosteroid. Due to the limited data on corticosteroids specifically for COVID-19, I will cover first the indirect evidence and then I will cover the direct evidence in COVID-19. This is the first study. It's a meta-analysis of randomized control trials. It evaluated the mortality in patients with ARDS. In this meta-analysis, they found a reduction in the risk of mortality in the corticosteroid group. The risk ratio was 0.75, meaning that there was a reduction by 25% in mortality. The subgroup analysis showed that the significant benefit of corticosteroid was only found when it was given for less than seven days. So only when given for short course, again, this is for the overall ARDS, not specifically for COVID-19 ARDS. In addition, the duration of mechanical ventilation in ARDS patients was shorter in the corticosteroid group by about five days. The number of ventilator-free days was also shorter in the corticosteroid group by about four days. When we talk specifically about viral ARDS, we don't have randomized trials, but we have a number of observational studies. A meta-analysis of these studies uh, didn't show a significant benefit in mortality. Breaking down the analysis based on the type of virus showed higher mortality in the influenza patients, but no significant difference in the patient with coronaviruses. This doesn't include the COVID-19, and a major limitation of this meta-analysis is the confounding by indication due to including observational studies only. Now let's discuss the studies of corticosteroid in COVID-19 patients. The first study by Wu et al. was a retrospective cohort study in China. It included 84 patients with ARDS. They used methylprednisolone, although no data about the dose or duration, and they found an association with reduced risk of death in patients who used methylprednisolone. The hazard ratio was 0.38, and this was statistically significant. Wang et al. study was a retrospective cohort study in China, including only 46 patients with severe COVID-19 pneumonia. They used methylprednisolone, 1 to 2 mg per kilogram per day, for 5 to 7 days. In the corticosteroids group, they didn't find a difference in the mortality, but they found faster improvement in oxygen saturation, eight days in the corticosteroid group versus 14 days in the non-corticosteroid group. Also, they found reduced need for mechanical ventilation, 11.5% versus 35%, in addition to lower length of stay in the hospital, 14 versus 21 days, and in the ICU, eight days versus 15 days. The Lu et al. study is a retrospective cohort study in China, which included 244 critically ill COVID-19 patients with ARDS or sepsis with acute organ dysfunction. Out of those, 62 were propensity score matched. They used methylprednisone or dexamethasone, 40 mg per day of methylprednisone or equivalent, for a median of 8 days. There were no differences in the 28-day mortality in multivariate analysis or propensity score matched patient. Cruz et al. published a retrospective cohort study in Spain, which included 463 propensity score matched patients with COVID-19 pneumonia with ARDS and or hyperinflammatory syndrome. They used 1 mg per kilogram per day of methylprednisone or equivalent doses 
or pulses. However, most, pa most patients receive the initial uh, one milligram per kilogram per day, and the exact duration is not clear. They found that the in-hospital mortality was significantly lower in the corticosteroid group, 14% versus 24%, and the hazard ratio was 0.51. Fadel et al. published a pretest post-test quasi-experimental study in the United States. It included 213 patients with moderate to severe COVID-19 pneumonia requiring respiratory support. They used methylprednisolone 0.5 to 1 mg per kilogram per day for a median of three days. Corticosteroid use was associated with a reduction in the composite endpoint of escalation from more to ICU new requirement of mechanical ventilation and mortality, around 35% versus 54%. After adjustment, the adjusted odd ratio was 0.41. If we looked at each outcome separately, corticosteroid use was associated with a reduction in the mortality, 14% versus 26%, Requ uh, new requirement of mechanical ventilation, 22% versus 37%, and escalation from more to ICU, 27% versus 44%. In addition, development of new ARDS occurred in 27% in the corticosteroid group versus 39% in the standard of care group. Additionally, corticosteroid use was associated with a reduction in the hospital length of stay, five days versus eight days. A retrospective cohort study in China by Sun et al. included 139 patients with COVID-19 of any severity. They used methylprednisolone or dexamethasone 0.5 to 1 mg per kilogram per day of methylprednisolone or equivalent doses for a median of seven days. They found higher adjusted odds of clinical deterioration during the whole hospital stay, but no difference was found in deterioration within 72 hours of first signs and symptoms. A retrospective cohort study in China by Yuan et al. included 132 patients with non-severe COVID-19 pneumonia. Out of those, 70 were propensity score matched. They used methylprednisolone 50 mg per day for a median of 11 days. They found a lower CT imaging score on day 7 in the corticosteroid group, 8.6 days versus 12 days, and this was statistically significant. No significant differences were found in other outcomes, progression to severe disease cases, length of stay, viral shedding duration, and fever time. In addition, no significant differences in all outcomes were found in the propensity score match patient. In terms of randomized clinical trial, so far we have the results of one RCT, which is the recovery trial. The results of this study uh, has been shared in a press release and it's not published so far. I will share more details once this study is published. However, this study compares different arms. One of the arms is dexamethasone, which included more than 2,000 patients, compared with the usual care group, which included more than 4,000 patients. In this study, they found lower 28-day mortality, uh, more patient discharge from the hospital within 28 days, and uh, less number of patients receiving invasive mechanical ventilation in the dexamethasone group. In the subgroup analysis of 28-day mortality, uh, they found that the subgroup who received invasive mechanical ventilation had lower mortality in the dexamethasone group and the relative risk was 0.65. So there was a 35% reduction in mortality and the number needed to treat was 8. In the subgroup who received oxygen only, the relative risk was 0.8, and the number needed to treat was 25. However, in the subgroup who did not receive oxygen, the relative risk was 
1.22 and it was not statistically significant. So in summary, the role of corticosteroids in COVID-19 is controversial. Low-dose dexamethasone was found in one RCT to significantly reduce mortality in COVID-19 patients requiring respiratory support. However, no evidence of benefit and a concern of potential harm in patients not requiring respiratory support. There are multiple ongoing RCTs trying to evaluate the role of corticosteroid in COVID-19. On behalf of the Society of Infectious Disease Pharmacists, Thank you for listening and let me know if you have any questions.